I would love to just ask a personal question. So for you, when you look back on your 20 year old self and the experiences that you've now had, what advice would you give to that person? And more importantly, what advice would you tell that person to avoid? Thanks for having me. This is really a great opportunity to, to share some perspectives. And this question is very timely because I'm actually coming up on a milestone birthday tomorrow I turn 50, which is kind of hard to believe. I've been reflecting on that question of 30 years. Oh my gosh. I still feel like I'm 20 in many ways, but the biggest things I think that I've learned with all that experience, especially right now in the COVID situation, be really open, continue to build relationships, always look for opportunities of where you can add value and where you can learn and really just keep focusing on, you know, being in touch with what it is that really excites you and what you're interested in. For me, when I was 20, I was really curious about this up and coming industry called the high tech industry. So for me, I just felt a pull to, to technology. It seemed exciting, it seemed interesting. I felt like I could learn a lot. And so that's kind of where I, I, I focused my energies and where I've spent my, my whole career. Find that for you, whatever that is, just continue to find those areas where, where you're interested. Your 20s are all about learning. And I definitely see that now, being older, looking back at some of the things that happened to me in my 20s that I thought were failures, they actually were the best things that led me to where I am today, but I didn't know that then. So kind of just being open and looking at any opportunity, whether it's a positive or negative one, as, a, as it's a way of directing you on your path. So just kind of trusting the process. I like to reframe the word failure as learning because really any time that you have something that doesn't work out the way you intended it to, it's an opportunity to learn. So if you're not feeling like you're learning or failing, then you're not growing. And so you, we have to keep growing no matter what your age, even now, even me going into my next chapter where I own a business, I still have so much left to do. Um, I'm constantly learning new things. So sometimes things kind of come out of left field that are really the best things for you. So just staying open. For people who are entering the sales world, uh, I think one aspect that they are a little nervous about is building that personal brand or how to, to display that personal brand. So what are some of your strategies and methodologies for young, um, ambitious salespeople to go ahead and do that and then create those relationships? Yeah, so your personal brand, the way I define it is it's the intersection of your strengths and your passions. And so this is kind of about knowing yourself and what you're really good at, like what you're naturally really good at. And you probably always have been your whole life and not overlooking it. Many of us kind of overlook what's easy for us to do. And oftentimes that is our unique differentiator or those strengths and also those things that you might love. So in any kind of discipline, there's nuances. And so when I think about it, where you guys are today is you really have an opportunity to be much more specialized and niche than ever before in time. And I think that's actually how you stand out. Finding those things that are interest you, going and building a skill. Like right now, I know that a lot of companies are have hiring freezes and internships are getting paused or eliminated, right? So that's, that's a super big bummer, but there are opportunities and things you can do. Think about a skill that you wanted to acquire. There's so much online learning now. So how can you now get ahead of this and position yourself as that unique, awesome person to stand out in whatever, when maybe you want to go learn Python coding or WordPress or go learn SEO. You want to be the best at SEO or you want to be the best at email marketing. There's so many nuances and online trainings out there that you can you can go try some of these things, take this time to invest in yourself. And if you love it, if you go through these trainings and you're like, oh my God, I love this, then start building your brand, just start doing the work and knowing that at some point, you know, like it's good karma, it will come back. It will come back to help you out. I think that's the biggest thing is right now is like the relevancies. And I think for a lot of students, um, pre-COVID-19, like we were looking at a fantastic job market to enter. For those students who are still looking for those positions, what advice would you give them to help navigate um, the COVID-19 current environment and then the future work environment that will be ahead of us for the next few years? I view this time as an amazing opportunity for innovation, creativity, 
new ways of thinking, everything's being challenged. And if you're you know, just coming out of college, nothing's more exciting because that's kind of what they teach you, right? Like learn by doing, that's Cal Poly's motto. It's really about experimenting. And so you, the students, I think especially Cal Poly students, are at such an advantage to walk in with a fresh perspective. And it's a matter of just continuing to build your skills, build your network. This is a message I've been repeating over and over and over with my team. Focus on what you can control because your stress and your anxiety levels increase when you focus on things you can't control. Look, the past is behind us. One thing we know for sure is we're not going back to the way things were. Now, we don't really know what the new world's gonna look like yet, and that's this ambiguous transitionary period we're all in and that can feel a little unsettling, but I believe it can be a better world. We can create better moving forward. It's up to all of us to create what better means. So focus on those things for yourself and where your contributions are. And we're, we're gonna get through this, no doubt about it, and we're gonna be better for it. But it's each of our responsibility to remember back to your personal brand, what are your unique, unique gifts and talents the world needs and making sure you're offering them because the world really does need all, all of your unique gifts and talents today.